everyone, and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. My name is Phoenix, and uh, welcome back my uh, my lovely co-host, uh, Minho. Hello. Aren't you excited? No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I purposely picked this out. I was going to pick a nice team book, maybe something that we read before, but then I realized that anytime you pick a book, it's been Spongebob or Scooby-Doo. They're normal. Don't you mean normal? <laughs> and since your books are quote unquote normal, I picked out a great book. Uh, it w it's based off of a movie from my childhood and whatnot. A movie? Yeah. Like a Disney movie? Uh, no, it's not a Disney movie. This act this studio technically doesn't exist anymore. Disney bought it and then just ran that company into the ground. They don't make anything under that studio anymore, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, everyone loves this movie. I love this movie. So why not make a fucking crack ship, you know? So, here you go. It is from the movie Robots. <laughs> if you remember that from 2005. Robots? You never... familiar. It's by Blue Sky. The people that made Ice Age. They made Ice Age? Okay. Yeah. So it's, Robots. It's this, um... So basically, it's from the, the, the 2005 movie called Robots. It's basically like human, like robots just rule this like this world, and they're made up of parts, and people get upgrades, and it's like a it's almost like an economic commentary almost. <laughs> what was the movie called? Robots. I'm look up. Robots. Movie. Fender was pretty funny. It's that red robot. I Fuck, what was the name of the voice actor? He's dead now. Robbie Williams? Fuck, what oh, is this it? movie? I think I've seen this like once. Well, oh, okay. it definitely looks familiar. I've definitely seen this before. Beautiful. But uh, I don't really remember a lot of it. Alright, ne next time I, I see you, we're pulling up the Robots movie. <laughs> nope. What do you mean, That's no? It's nope. really good. <laughs> I watched it when I was at work one time. It was it was beautiful. Let me look up the robots movie IMDb. Yeah. Let's see what IMDb has to say a about description this. Description of it. Oh, oh, yeah. That's not bad. From from what I'll I'll read the description. It kind of sums up what happened in the last scene of the movie. So here here's the synopsis of the book. Uh, that fucking author's note. Move that out of the way. At one point in his life. Phineas T. Ratchet was the proud owner of Big Weld in Industries, but after his run-in with Roddy Copperbottom and other rusty robots, he was down the dumps. Literally, not only is he chained for seemingly all of eternity with his sneezy father in what remains of the underground, but he lost his mother. It seems like his life was over, but that all changes when his arch-nemesis, Rodney, shows up again one day. So it just continues the fucking the book. Not the book. It continues the fucking movie. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, so this is a gay ship between the two. I think that Of course it is. Yeah, this is <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean by that? This is um it's no, labeled no, as a crack ship. So I don't know if this actually constitutes as a crack ship. This could be enemies to lovers, who knows? I don't know. What is a crack ship? A crack ship is a you know the um the the most famous example of this is Elsa from Frozen, ex uh, Jack Frost from the Guardians. They like two people that have never met before or have like literally no chemistry, never reacted in their media, nothing. The two characters from like different universes. Yeah, or they could be from the same universe. It's just they never interact in the in canon. You know. That's basically what a crack ship is. Okay. Yeah. Or you know, I learn something new every day. Yeah, isn't that great? And also, you get little snippets of the movie, so maybe you'll figure out what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't remember this, but like I've I've seen this before, but I've uh, I have faint memories of it. Yeah, I, it was my childhood. I watched this, so I had it on DVD. <laughs> I'm definitely not. Uh, looking forward to this tag right here, cringe. Well, but what do you expect? It's a it's a fan fiction of a movie made like 
How, what years? It's almost been 10 years. Or 20. 20. Oh, 20. Oh, God. <laughs> it's almost been wait, 20 Wait, yeah, years. wait. This book was made in last year. What is this guy doing? They must have seen the movie recently, and they're like, I know what I have to do, but do I have the strength to do it? And then they wrote this masterpiece and completed it. <laughs> Which I can appreciate. He he went with the bit and, and went on. Alright. Alright, so, do you want to be heads or tails? <laughs> um, tails. Alright, tails you read, heads or read. It's tails. Tails you read, uh, heads. You read. All right, I'll read first. These, I think these are pretty. Sh yeah, these are short chapters, so we can do like <laughs> one-offs. I'll, I'll, I'll read. I'll read okay. it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let's see. All right. Uh, oh, read the. Uh, read the synopsis. Bro, I did. <laughs> where, no, where I mean, were you? Sorry, not the synopsis. Author's note. Oh, author's note. Cole. I've only watched robots. Hey. Huh? Wait, where? Wait, what are you reading? Are you reading the the first bit of like? Oh, okay. I thought I clicked the chapter. I was like, why is this chapter so short? It didn't. Uh, it was still loading. Okay, oh. okay. It loaded. It loaded. I was like, what the fuck are you reading? All right, dumped. Chapter one. How many reads does this have? Four hundred. All right. Yeah, we're about to two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Seven stars, one comment. <laughs> Where do you find these? What, these kind of books? Yes. They just pop up on my free page. I'll be scrolling through trying to find a good read. And it's like, recommended for you based off of your your history. So I don't know what I was reading to get robots promoted to me, but... Let's see if this book is good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, chapter one. Dumped. Okay. Drip. 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 It was the constant dripping of oil, the endless hum of the furnace, and the rackety shaking of conveyor belts that were still operating through the absent mind of the tin crested offender, who was entangled by chains, hanging over what once was his. The underground was now a scrubble of its remains, destroyed by the rust-coated robots that defiled against his and his mother's plan. All that was left of him now was a shell of who he used to be, the powerful and controlling man he was. Now he just looked pathetic and pitiful. Perhaps that's what his mother would have said if she was there at the moment. Only all that was left of her was a melted mess somewhere in that furnace that used to glow ever so brightly, brighter than the brightest embers. What the fuck? His mom got melted? Okay. Yeah, that's what happened. She murdered her at the end of the movie. Dang, so it's gonna wash it again. Wow, it's just blow it, Jesus. Well, it's not really murdered. It in the past, Ratchet would typically spend his day in, <laughs> in big wealth industries, concocting new ideas and planning to make forward a change that he believed was right on his end. Perhaps he was drinking his daily quart of oil in his office, or taking or talking business with his colleagues, or maybe he was scheming uh, something towards Cappy, the supposed woman of his life. Of course, after she defied him for that copper bottom freak, those feelings were gone in an instant. Though he would be lying if he admitted that he didn't feel any sort of heartbreak from it. And because of copper bottom, he was stuck here in this damning place with his father, who was anything but quiet. You know, son, he went on again, sometimes you just need a shoulder to cry on. That's what I learned. Normally, he would shout at him to shut his trap, but after a while, Ratchet shut his own, not exactly seeing the point anymore. So days went on, with his father rambling on with him, swinging in the, w swinging in the wind and chains. Uh, one day, however, something new and interesting happened. Through the sound of his father's distant mothering, or mummering, was the sound of clanky footsteps. It started from far away and the echo was faint, making the corrupt businessman believe that it was just a piece of metal falling or something like that. But as it got louder and louder, it only turned into suspicion. Someone else was there, but who? Then he saw it. A rusty bot with a dull shine to its metal form, caked of blue and white, with a sort of fin going down his head. He was holding a toolbox that looked light in his grip, 
and yet he walked casually in the abandoned, formerly treacherous underground. Ratchet curled his bolted fists, growling at the sight of him. It was Rodney Copperbottom. Uh, Alright, who is Rodney Copperbottom? He's the is main the villain? character. Oh. Yeah, he's the main protagonist. Rodney Copperbottom is the main protagonist. The guy that we just read for, the uh, Phineas T. Ratchet, he was the villain of the movie. So he kind of got his comeuppance and was, uh, now he's just chilling. Wait, so the R Ratchet is the villain? Yeah. Rat. Shit. Robot. Phineas T. Ratchet. Trying to see what he looks like. Yeah. Oh, this guy looks like a villain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! And Rodney, Rodney's the blue robot, okay. Yeah, they yeah, show I... a picture of him in this, uh, in this next chapter. In this All next right. chapter labeled Rodney. Only 200 people made it this far? What the fuck? <laughs> this shit need more views. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie Copperbottom. What what the devious little scoundrel he was. Or at least to Ratchet at that moment. I mean, he literally was the one who destroyed him, his and Madame Gadget's, Ratchet's mom's, underground factory and practically ripped him from his production of improved parts of, for robots. Clearly, it was his own fault. It, wait, clearly it was all his fault here. As without him, he would have wouldn't have been chained to to the man he called father. With his eyes full of hatred, he silent he silently yet aggressively watched as Rodney strolled through the broken underground, swinging his toolbox at his side. Every so often, he would crouch down to the ground to inspect a sheet of metal or a screw or a nail, where he would then open up his empty toolbox and set it in. Ratchet couldn't believe what he was doing. Not only did he and his little gang of misfits take over his reign, but now he was stealing from him? What was the point of that? When he lingered close enough to where the forgotten duo were shackled, Raja opened his big fat mouth to give the Rodney a piece of his mind. Hey! He shouted. His voice echoed through the underground, and it wasn't enough to catch Rodney's attention. Well, to be fair, he's the only other person <laughs> I think I'd be spooked if I was like in a in a abandoned place and I heard someone yell at me. I think I would shit my pants and book it out of there. <laughs> His voice echoed throughout the underground. It was enough to catch Ronnie's attention. He stood up and looked at the robot stripped stripped of his improved body. Though he didn't seem to have the same furiousness as Ratchet. Or so his slightly surprised expression to to convey. Oh, Phine Phineas, he said, standing up from his crouched state. I forgot you were still down here. He turned his head towards the robot's father and waved. Hello, Mr. Cashin. What a pleasant surprise. Oh. Bonjour. You know I bonjour can't read. Gasket. <laughs> you know I... Bonjour, Gasket. That was his father. He just, like, hangs up there for the entire movie. Hangs up there? Just yeah. The whole time? Yep, just the whole time. What a pleasant surprise! The skinny robot turned to his son and lowered his voice to whisper, Remind me who he is again. Ratchet ignored him. What do you think you're doing here, copper bottom? Didn't you get the memo last time? You're not welcomed. Not you, nor your kind. That's rich coming for you, Ratchet. Rodney replied care carefree, picking up another sheet of metal. Because I don't remember anyone wanting you here. He tossed in his tool toolbox, as if he was pr proving a point. Well, in a way, he was right. Ratchet scrunched up his metal face, or as much as you can muster. What are you doing here anyway? Did you seriously come all the way here to steal from me? Stealing? From you? Yes. I'm not stealing anything, Rodney claimed, as this place technically isn't yours anymore, and wasn't yours to begin with. Everyone is free to do whatever they want with it. Well, under the permission of Big Weld, of course. He picked up a wobbly sheet of scrap off the ground and, and wiggled it in front of him, making a warpy whoopy sound. Oh my god, I love that sound. <laughs> Make the sound, do it. I can't, oh, I, I can't pull it up right now, but it's such a funny No, no, you gotta sound. do it with your mouth. Do it with your voice. I, bro, you think I could emulate sound wobbling? <laughs> 
you can try. Yeah, and just like that's a that's my impression of that sound. Wait, what? Bro, that picked up. I saw it. <laughs> oh no, actually, I didn't. I didn't okay. hear it actually. It's what, just, what was it? Do it, it again. Okay, I'm assuming it's like. That. Don't. That sound. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little bit, whatever. It's I can't. You like that sound? Dude, it's such a nice sound, you know? You don't get to hear it that much, cause, like, unless you work with metal constantly, you know? I, I don't know if I would like the sound, just judging from what I heard so far. Okay, well, anyway, I'm not a piece of metal, I can't make that sound. And why don't you become a piece of metal, huh? And anyway, if you need to know, <laughs> I need some extra scrap. I know that you would probably have some. Ratchet smiled devilishly. For your tinkering, I suppose? Is that right? To put it simply, yes. So you think that because you broke down my factory that you can just go into walk all over me? Ronnie just stayed silent, looking around awkwardly as Ratchet spat out its sloppiness. Oh, softness. I can't read. And anyway, you don't even think of asking me first? Does no one care about Ratchet's feelings anymore? Run... Ronnie tightened his jaw and averted his gaze before looking up at the hanging bot. If it makes you feel better, sir. It'd make me feel better if you would leave, Ratchet interrupted, pointing at the exit. Ronnie frowned and narrowed his eyes. I was actually going to thank you. Ratchet's face disfigured in suspicion. Thank me? For what? For helping me. Without you, I would have never met Big Wild, helping my dad and achieve my dreams. In a way, I'm kind of glad that I met you, Ratchet. Ratchet growled. I should have ripped you up the first day I met you, Copper Bum. Oh, Copper Bum. You yeah. gonna take that? You <laughs> gonna take that? Gonna ta to be fair, Ratchet is just hanging from the ceiling, stuck there forever. <laughs> fight, fight, <Yeah>. fight. <laughs> Ronnie faked a smile. We'll see. Picking up another scrap of metal, he turned his back to Ratchet and walked out of the underground. Every time I read the fucking word underground, it sounds like the fucking Undertale thing. Also, I love this picture from the movie. <laughs> Do you see it in Which the one? next chapter? Oh, that? Yeah. <laughs> ah. Yeah, it's such a mood. Escape. Gasp. <laughs> Gasp in parentheses. Yeah, but even the author's shocked. They're like, oh my god, he escaped. <laughs> see. Okay, Ratchet's father seemed rather pleased by Rodney's visit, even going as far as to wave him goodbye. Wow, son, that copper bottom fellow sure is something special, wouldn't you say? Oh, wait, sorry. Give me one second. I'm getting a call. Oh. <laughs> In a million years, Ratchet said under his breath. You know, son, his dad went on. You and him aren't so different. He's an inventor like you. Now, that's a real treasure. Shut up. Dad, Maybe Ratchet the real snapped. treasure were the friends we made along the way. <laughs> yeah, something <laughs> that could One piece, pretty. yeah. <laughs> that's the, yeah, that's the real One Piece. Yeah. <laughs> he uncomfortably wriggled around in the chains, making them clank and ring. At first glance, he seemed to be spasming out. These stupid things. Why do they have to? Ugh. Ratchet's father swung back and forth with the movement. Oh, now what are you doing? I can't take this anymore. Can't take what? Tell me. I'm here for you. Uh, that's exactly the problem. With all his might and with great desperation, he continued to struggle and swing in the chains, jerking his body harder. His father seemed to get wordy. Careful, son. You might hurt. With one last shove... The chains that Ratchet was drawn to suddenly clipped from his side and he collapsed onto the hard floor. His yes. father made a painful face before realizing that something was wrong. Ratchet didn't seem to notice anything other than the fact that he wasn't hanging anymore. Yes, I'm free, he celebrated. I'm free. Uh, son? Ratchet spun around and pointed at his father. I'll never be bound to you again, father. Not to you or your stupid blabbering nonsense. But son, look. Ratchet looked down and saw his right arm was gone. <laughs> <Love that. laughs> okay. I mean, they're robots. Going, 
<laughs> Going wide-eyed, he screamed, My arm! He frantically turned around as she searched for it in the rubble. Seconds later, he found it. It must have popped out of his socket when he fell down. Agitated, Ratchet tried to put it back, but it didn't work. A screw was missing, and he couldn't find it. It was like it vanished out of thin air. Don't worry, son, he heard his father up above. I'm sure you can get it fixed. Say, why don't you go see that copper bottom fellow? I'm sure he'll be able to help you. What? Are you out of your mind? Ratchet stomped his feet. Well, he'll help you with your arm. That he might do, Ratchet said, but I'm not going to go to that slacking good for nothing. For anything. Yeah, don't go to Copper Bum. Copper Bum is a bum. Oh shit, throwing hands. <laughs> He's the one with the tools, son. I don't know what else to tell you. Ratchet growled and hugged his arm against his chest, pacing around in a circle. He thought for a moment, trying to figure out what to do, but certainly didn't want to be down in the underground anymore. And he did want to get his revenge on Robbie and those Rusties. But at the same time, he didn't want anything to do with them. He just wanted them to be gone. They practically ruined his life, after all. After a moment, he came to realize that his father was right. He could go and see Rodney, and having a broken part would only make an excuse to go. He had it all thought out. He would go find Rodney and ask him to fix his arm. Doing so, he'll be able to find him and his group and make his revenge. It was brilliant. Wait. Is Rodney like a mechanic or something? How is he able to fix this dude's arm? Yeah, he's a mechanic. He invents things. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's like that you didn't even watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, alright? Maybe I should have paid attention ten years ago and made this a core memory. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, instead you focused on Spongebob while I was here focusing on on, <laughs> on robots. Yeah, I was, just, I was focusing on more important things like Spongebob, exactly. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> uh, you know what, Dad? You're right. I am? Yes, I shall go and find Copperbottom. Surely he will fix my arm, just like you said. And what about me? Can I come along too? <laughs> Ratchet started backing away from his hanging father. I really think that you should stay here, he said. You know, guard that place. Keep it savvy. Nice and dandy, alright? Oh, alright then. His dad gave him a thumbs up. I'll be here if you need anything. Yeah. Turning his heel, Ratchet forced smile to turn his Ratchet's forced smile turned into a frown as he walked away, exiting the underground. Is this canon? Like, is this actually happening in the movie? Well, the movie ends with him being hung up and they do like you know that old cliche in older movies where they beat the villain and they start having a dance party? <laughs> yeah. They do that. <laughs> they do that at the end of the movie. They have a big ass dance party. <laughs> and it's That's beautiful funny. and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Robot City. I wonder if this city has robots in it. <laughs> no, possibly not. That's crazy if it did. Yo, yeah, there's a robot right there! <laughs> oh my god. I feel like it has been Asian since Ratchet used his feet. It was so long since he walked with that his legs practically felt limp and wobbly, almost like he had forgotten how to even use them. Eventually, however, he managed to get the hang of it again as he climbed out of the underground, leaving his beloved father behind. He's just gonna fucking leave him there dangling. <laughs> Give me the rest of the book. <laughs> Forever. Yeah. When he stepped to the light of the sun, he had to block his eyes. It was so bright. Especially considering that he was trapped in the dark for so long. Even then, the fruitful town of Yeah, the fruitful town of Robot City seemed to just be as just alive as it as the day he what he felt that, that degrading, dreadful civilization. Then he when he took over Big Weld industry, why it was it was as though he had the ultimate power at his fingertips, where he could he could perfect that town however he wished. Ah, those were the good old days. Of course, that was before Ronnie challenged him. It was. It only left Ratchet wanting to hurry up and find him quickly. It was difficult for Ratchet to blend in. Now that he had spent a long time in that dump, he practically looked like 
the out models walking around on the streets. Still, Ratchet couldn't help but be disgusted at the revolting robots. To him, they were just wasting material that couldn't that could have been used for something more improved. That was the only way to move forward, at least to him. As he was walking around, he noticed that the vacuums that polished the streets were no longer prodding down, sucking up the out models and storing them for the chop shop. Many of them are used for that fight against the Restes, he remembered, but he didn't think that they were all gone. In a way, it was very saddening. Hey, buddy! The old, sounding voice came from behind him, and Ratchet turned around to see that short, elderly-looking robot come up to him. Wait a minute, is that that one guy? I'm trying to remember if it, if it is. It's, he's a very short man that mans the gates, and he's an asshole to Rodney. I'm sure I wouldn't remember. I want to see if it's him. Uh, yeah. Ratchet made a disgusted look, yet the robot didn't even seem to notice. I see your arm there is loose! You ought to see someone for that! That was when Ratchet smiled. This was his chance. I was actually looking for someone, Ratchet confessed. Tell me, do you know where I can find Rodney Copperbottom anywhere? The robot scratched his chin. Well, he's mostly over at Big Welds, but during this time he'd probably be at his workshop. He spends the entire evening fixing robots and giving out parts to them. He's such a charming robot, always helping others. Excellent, Rodney hissed to himself. He cleared his throat. Do you think you can tell me the way? Sure! It's it's right over there! It's like across the building. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like sure, it's right there! It's like the shop right like where they're standing right next to <laughs> The robot pointed over to a certain building nearby. From there, there were. It looked like it was. There were quite a few robots lined up outside. They also looked a little roughed up and were missing parts or had broken pieces, just like Rodney. He cringed, yet at the same time, he felt a little excited. Without saying another word to the older robot, Ratchet walked over to the building, getting in line. As much as he wanted to see Rodney as soon as possible, he wanted to keep his guard low. Fortunately, no one seemed to have noticed him. Which is also kind of a problem, as it brought down his ego. But without his upgraded parts, it made him almost unrecognizable. The line gradually got longer as time went on, and Ratchet only got closer to the gore. It was so close, and yet so far away. When he was the next one in, Ratchet could barely contain himself. He peered through the window and saw Rodney, the mechanic himself, using a wrench to crank, crank something on the robot's neck. Ratchet stepped up and frowned, wondering if he could really go along with this. A few minutes later, still wondering what to do, the robot that was there walked out the door, leaving Ronnie with not without much of a choice. I love how I'm getting recommended secret lab uh, chairs. <laughs> right now. Is that your is that yeah, the, that's the your Abby recommendations? Keeps, yeah. Uh, and apparently lens cameras. I've never bought a fucking camera in my life. Like the the Nikon's. What's a Nikon's? It's a brand of camera. Huh. Uh, why is it recommending me fucking lenses for cameras that I don't have? <laughs> Maybe you were uh, looking up cameras. One time on Amazon or something. Oh, I did. Well, that's when I was buying my webcam, but I don't. I don't need that. Ah, uh, you see, there it is. Yep, my one-time search. The... Well, they're always gonna just look at one search and then just recommend you ads or something. Dude, exactly. Just paranoid about that. Bro, I looked up one thing and it's been all over my my ad thing. It, it hasn't gone away right. for like a month. What? I had a curiosity, I was like, how much would a first suit be? And then I looked it up and now I'm constantly okay, getting your <laughs> What? What? Excuse me? Yeah, I looked up first suit because I thought they were cool. Uh I was like, well I know they like the, the normal animal ones, but do they have one for like a bird? And then I looked it up and the, they do make like bird ones. I'm like, oh that's cool, but I don't have the money for that because those are like sure of thousands of dollars. And now I keep getting it recommended Wait, to me. Yeah, fursuits are very... Are they? There are thousands for custom-made fursuits. What? 
Okay, you didn't know the the stock markets of uh. Of no, I I did not. That's why when you like, if you ever see a like a per, like a furry out in public of like full on fur suits, just just know they spend thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars on their thing. So they're rolling in money. <laughs> okay, so just furries are just rich. Yeah. Fuck, what was it? Someone did, like, an interview with a bunch of, like, they went to a furry convention and did interviews, so, like, they asked them first, like, what do they do for a living, and then asked them how much their fursuit was. Some of them are in, like, the tech field, some of these are part of, like, the medical fields and whatnot, and and they're like, and then, my fursuit cost me, like, $50,000. <laughs> I, I wish I was kidding. These things are a lot of money. No... Well, yeah, like, There's no way one is fifty thousand dollars. What is it made of? Gold. Well, it all depends on how, like, cause, the, cause if you're getting like full body, they have to take all your measurements to make sure it fits comfortably around you, so it's not too tight but not too loose, cause you can easily get overheated, and whatnot. And then it's feet pads, the body you gotta, itself, like, go in the to hands. Get your body measured, or I guess that makes sense, but. Yeah. And then it's like the head, and then like how detailed you want it to be, and what kind of species you know, so... My, my friend Gummy <laughs> can explain this a oh lot better. God. I mean, there's a lot of different like animals that you can be. Apparently you can be a bird. And I was like, what, it'd be so cool if I can get my little phoenix guy to be a, like, as a fursuit. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was just, I know, it was just a thought! <laughs> I thought it was gonna be cool, and then I realized how expensive they were, and I'm like, nah, I'll think about it. <laughs> You were just going to buy one on a whim? Yeah, I was like, can I start fucking, like, uh, getting that shit made through, like, Etsy? <laughs> <laughs> like, I like my- I would like to commission my- <laughs> my Phoenix guy to be, a uh, fursuit. <laughs> How much? $10,000? Perfect. <laughs> yeah, 10000 that's it. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, a lot of okay. money. <laughs> uh. Oh shoot, we're on the next chapter. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck, what's the name of it? Uh, screw- wait, screwing around? Excuse me? Uh, <laughs> this wasn't la labeled mature? <laughs> no, not that screwing around. Stop reading, smut, alright? Okay. <laughs> My bad. Enough. Enough reading. Enough reading? Okay. Thank you guys for watching today. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, screwing around. Ratchet walked into the shop. It reeked of old recycled parts, but instead of them being new and improved, they were all just the same. Set aside for some kind of use to the robots that needed it. The air seemed to have a strange aftertaste to it, and the interior didn't exactly help with that either. In fact, it seemed to have made it worse. Though the scrap metal hanging well organized on the wall or stashed in boxes and compartments, there was a seat that one could sit at. Sitting on a stool beside that would one beside that one was none other than the blue and white Rusty himself. Rodney. His back was facing the doorway as he was busy wiping off his tools. This was a perfect opportunity for Ratchet to inflict some kind of assault on him. Perhaps he could hit him in the back of the head or wring out his neck. <laughs> fix my arm. Yeah, just hit him in the back of his head. Yeah, just fix the arm. Like, fix it, fix it, fix it! And then just... <laughs> <laughs> Though, as he took a step forward, the floor under him creaked, alerting Rodney of his presence. Come in, he heard Rodney say. Take a seat and I'll take care of you in a sec. Ratchet held his breath and looked down at the seat before looking over his shoulder. He furled his brows. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to act out on Rodney right now. There were still people lined up outside, after all. Doing so would only get him caught. Exhaling a breath, Ratchet glared at Rodney before going to the empty stool, sitting down. He rested his broken arm in his lap, waiting for Rodney to finish with whatever he was doing. He took everything in him to not swing a punch right now. <laughs> Jesus, this guy's violent. Yeah. When Rodney was finally done, he spun around in his stool to face the silver robot. That was when Ratchet noticed that he had a protective eyewear on, making his eyes look big. Rodney smiled and was in the middle of greeting him, but when he realized who it was, he gave a soft oh in surprise. Ratchet, he said, swallowing uncomfortably. What? How did you get here? 
I managed Copper Bottom. No thanks to you. I see. He fidgeted with a, the wrench in his hand before setting it down. Well, what are you doing here? Ratchet held up his broken limb. limp. My arm somehow popped out of my socket. I was actually hoping that you would help me with it, since you're so experienced and all with that kind of thing. Unless the rumors aren't true. Oh, even though he acted like he was surprised, he was suspicious of what Ratchet was really doing there. Even then, he remained professional. Ratchet was just another cu uh, another customer. How do you spell customer? With the Cost U. <laughs> I was like, wait, have I been spelling it wrong this whole time? No. Costumer. He cleared his throat and uh, gestured to the robot's arm. May I? Ratchet held it out to him. Rodney inspected it for a second. It looks like it just needs to be screwed back on. You wouldn't happen to have a screw, would you? Ratchet asked. Rodney shook his finger as he stood up, walking past Ratchet towards one of his compartments in the room. I sure do, he said. Let me just find the right size for you. Rodney opened one of the compartments and looked for a screw, comparing them to the depth and size in Ratchet's arm. It took a moment, but he seemed to have found a match, as he went back to his seat with one in his hand. Okay, Rodney breathed, reaching over to grab his screwdriver. Can you turn a little so I can screw this back on? Ratchet did so, though still kept his glare on Rodney as he leaned forward, positioning his arm back into the right place. As he was figuring that out, he said, I'd think that your father would have come, uh, came with you since you left the underground. Don't worry about him, Ratchet said. He's perfectly fine. <laughs> you know, Rodney said, sliding in the screw into his shoulder. I never would have expected you to come here of all places. I just can't help but get the feeling that you're just not here to get your arm fixed. Then you'd be right, Ratchet said. I actually wanted to speak with you. Really, Rodney started screwing the screw with his screwdriver into Ratchet's arm. Why? I've been thinking about what you said, Ratchet said, and I wanted to say... Crap, what was he supposed to say now? Ratchet, Robbie butted in, or butted in, I wanted you to know that I forgive you. Huh? Yeah, everyone makes mistakes. Even though you practically threatened and brutally colonized an entire community of robots to appease your liking of making recycled new products, I forgive you. <laughs> Okay, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not worth it holding a grudge on someone who was misunderstood in the long run. Misunderstood? Ratchet repeated. Who are you calling misunderstood, Copperbottom? I understand that you wanted to be part of Big Weld's business, but I can also see that you were practically shaped by Madame Gasket's sin sinister desires. Given... Giving one last turn of his screwdriver, Rodney leaned back and put it away, letting Ratchet test out his arm. I want to believe that you aren't truly like that. You are a very brilliant man, after all, and I do think that you can be redeemable if you just try. Ratchet thought for a second. Maybe he should change his plans. Perhaps he should befriend Rodney and get to know him. That way, when he does take revenge on him, then the outcome for Rodney will be undeniably more painful. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer, like the saying goes. Liking this, Ratchet smiled evilly, making Rodney stare at him all weirded and out and stuff. Fine. I promise that I'll never disrespect another outmoder, another rusty robot ever again. Rodney seemed satisfied, but in his gut, he still had a bad feeling about this, so it was only his duty to keep an eye on Ratchet from now on. But... Now that he wasn't in the chop shop any- or now that he wasn't in the chop shop anymore. Hey, will you be going back to the underground then with your father? Why do you ask? Rodney smiled. Because I know a place where you can stay. Ooh. Wait, what, what is this again? What is this extra- <laughs> there's like too much plot going on, and I'm like trying to focus on what's actually going on. What is Wait, Ratchet? what kind of ship this Rodney. is? Oh, this is a ship between the main characters, okay. I yeah, got it, the I got main it. villain and then the main character. I see. Do you? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
It's gonna be okay, man. You'll get through this. I'm so confused. I'm just reading words. You sure are. <laughs> All right. Uh, what is? It? Oh, Aunt Fanny. I forgot about her. All right. Once Rodney was done with the shift, he led Ratchet, he led Ratchet away from the shop. At first, Ratchet thought he was going to take him back to the abandoned chop shop out of, out of malice. But when he didn't turn down the road that would take him there, he started to question where exactly he was going. In fact, he felt a little nervous. Was he taking him to a group to jump him or something? <laughs> where are you taking me? He finally asked Rodney. Rodney smiled at him. Just some, just to some old f friends. I think you'll remember them. Ratchet's instincts were right then. He was going to get jumped. <laughs> he was gonna get jumped. Either way, he kept silent and still watched with him, not wanting to seem too suspicious. While doing that, though, he was thinking of an escape plan when things went heavy. After going for what seems like forever in another part of Robot City, Ronnie started slowing down when he came to a certain house in a neighborhood. Here we are. What is this place? It's Aunt Fanny's, Ronnie simply said. Come on, I'm sure we can find you a room. Ah, so it was a hotel of sorts? Or maybe a housing place? Even if it was, Ratchet didn't let his guard down, ready to run it or fight if he had to. Ronnie rang the doorbell, hearing it go through the house. After a few seconds, someone answered the door. It was Fender! And he looked happy to see Ronnie. Ratchet remembered Fender by one by the one who got away from the chop shop and glared at him. Hey, Ronnie! Fender greeted. We were wondering where you were come when you were coming. How was your day? Same old, same old, Ronnie said. Hey, do you think that Aunt Fanny has room for one more? Oh, I believe so. Who that be for? Is Cappy staying over again? Fender peered outside to look for himself and he froze when he realized that he was... Ratchet standing there next to Rodney. His jaw dropped and he quickly grabbed onto his friend, attempting to pull him inside. <laughs> Rodney groaned. What are you doing? You can't let him in. Don't you remember what he tried to do to us? What he did to us? <laughs> yeah, but he wants to change his ways, Rodney said. He said so. Ratchet forced a smile and attempt to look innocent. It only made him look queasy. Do you really think that we should really trust him after everything he's done? He's willing to try. Just give him a chance. Then the end, he whispered to Fender. We can talk about this later. Fender stared at Rodney before glancing up at Ratchet again. He pinched his nose and sighed. All right, come in. Sending Ratchet an encouraging look, Rodney followed. Rodney followed Fender inside. Ratchet frowned and walked in after, having to crouch a little to get through the door. He closed it behind him and looked around in displeasure. The place was reeking with outmodel things, though. Maybe not as much as Ronnie's shop. Still, it did make him feel gross inside. <laughs> Aunt Fanny! Ronnie shouted. I'm back! Somewhere in the house, a voice replied to him. Ronnie! It, that's great! You're just in time for supper! Fender timidly went into the kitchen. I'll make sure to get another plate, he told He told Aunt Fanny. We're having a guest today. Ronnie and Ratchet followed him in just as Aunt Fanny was turning around to see who it was. He smiled as she saw Ratchet, not recognizing who he was at first. Oh, why, hello, are you a friend of Ronnie's? Friend, Ratchet thought, as if I ever be friends with this hunk of junk. But he kept that yeah. to himself, as Rodney explained to him. I mean, to be fair, you think that everyone's out models, but they don't have the brand new shit. He's a bougie. Uh, yeah. It, aw, shit. I don't know if you watched Has Been Hotel. F basically, this dude's just like Vox. Just selling the newest product of staying up to date, you know, all the trends. Gotta stay up to date. Yeah. Yeah, ba th I mean, basically, they're robots. They kind of have to stay up to date or else they're, ki they're kicking the can. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's probably just going to spend the night with us, he told her. How wonderful! Fender, can you go fetch some everyone else upstairs? Aunt Fanny asked. Sure, I'll be right back. As Fender left the room, he once again glanced at 
Ratchet in suspicion before heading upstairs. Ratchet just frowned his brows, troubled as Rodney told him to sit down. Oh. Dinner! <laughs> I just oh, had fun. dinner. Good dinner. Something's gonna happen. You think? That'd be crazy. Something's gonna happen at dinner. That's crazy. Like they All eat right. it? <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps they would eat it. Oh my god. Perhaps they'll eat dinner in like motor oil. <laughs> Some oils, screws. Yeah. Metal. Bas yeah, basically. Nutritious. <laughs> Gotta get your daily nutrition of iron. Yeah, basically. Do robots even need to eat? I know they have like a, a diner scene in this movie, but it is just like people drinking like oil and eating nuts and bolts. That's all they do. Is that weird that they eat nuts and bolts if they're made out of nuts and bolts? Yeah. Well, I guess, I mean, technically we're made out of meat and sometimes we eat meat products. Okay, yeah, but that is like... <laughs> <laughs> Don't even go there. <laughs> I'm right! I'm right! Don't even, don't even go there. That's like, no, I, I don't have a good analogy for that. I'm just shook that you would bring cannibals in love. What? I, I, okay, anyway, read the goddamn dinner. <laughs> All right, at dinner. Fender skidded to a stop as he went into his bedroom, into the bedrooms, beckoning everyone to get out with haste. As they were, they groaned and complained with him at his sudden recklessness. Recklessness. Frank was rubbing his forehead as he rolled out of his room, growling a little at thunder. What's the big idea? He said grumpily as Lug, Diesel, and Piper came out of their rooms well, as well, surprised yet at the same time annoyed. Downstairs, Thunder pointed frantically to the door, breathing hard. He's here, downstairs. Who is? Piper asked. Is it Rodney? Is something wrong? Thunder was wheezing now, having a hard time catching his breath. Frank slapped him in the face and shook him back and forth. Come on now, tell us. Fender stammered a little, but managed to get his voice back. He was still pointing to the door. Ratchet, he managed to say, he's here. What? Everyone said in unison. Ratchet's alive? Lug asked. I thought that he was still in the chop shop. What the heck is he doing here? Piper exclaimed. Are you just playing with us? Frank suspected. In the background... Diesel looked to be freaking out, running around in circles. You know, I realized that these names could be, like, slightly more creative. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, this is 2005. <laughs> <laughs> Diesel, Ratchet, Frank. Can't you, like, make a play on their name with an object like these or something? Or uh, oh, fuck. I'm trying to remember what these guys even look like. One of them only can talk through, like... They insert like a voice chip for them to use. And that's their whole thing. One of them is like a big I think that one's name's Diesel. And then one of them just has a wheel. He doesn't have like legs, he has a wheel. <laughs> <laughs> His name's Wheel and he's a wheel. Yeah, I think that's I think that's Diesel. I think uh, there's a blue one, there's a green one, there's an orange one, and there's a yellow one. Yellow one's Piper, I remember that. <laughs> this is like Pokemon naming. Or yeah. like you can guess what the Pokemon is without looking at the image. Yeah, it's like it's like I give you the name Diesel and you have to draw it <laughs> <laughs> with just the name. I'll just draw a can of Diesel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are you just playing with those crank suspected in the background? Diesel looked to be freaking out, running around in circles. I'm not. I swear, Thunder claimed. I saw him with my own eyes. He's down here, and Ronnie's with him. How's that even possible? I don't know, Rodney said. That ratchet was good now, but I don't believe it. Yeah, not for a second, Crank added. Not after what he did to us. What is Rodney thinking about bringing him here, Piper said. I don't know, Fender said. What are we gonna do? <laughs> do. Diesel started crying. Hold on a sec, guys. Lug chimed in. Who's Lug? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many characters now. 
All right, Lug chimed in. Rodney must have brought him here for a reason. We just need to ask him. I say that we just pretend that we're happy to see him before talking to Rodney about what's going on. I don't see why we need to pretend, Piper said, but I agree that we should talk to Rodney after dinner. Let's just keep our cool. After the Rusties came to an agreement, they headed downstairs and into the kitchen to see Aunt Fanny serving Rodney and Ratchet at the table. At first, I didn't realize that it was really him, mainly because of his outer shell was gone. Even then, they tried their best not to freak out on him, and sat down as Aunt Fanny served them, out, served them as well. After a second, she then left the room. Excuse me for a moment, she said. You all go ahead and eat. Once she left, Piper folded her arms. Hey Rodney, she said. She immediately got to the chase. Care to explain why she is here? Rodney put his fist to his mouth as he cleared his throat. Ratchet just needed a place to stay for the night is all. I'm sure you guys wouldn't mind, right? What makes you say that, Crank said. Of course we mind. Don't you remember what he did? Exactly, Rodney. Why should we trust him to stay in the boarding house? Log shook his head and hid his face in embarrassment. It was like no one was even listening to what he said earlier. <laughs> Rodney tried his best to keep his composure as Ratchet remained quiet. It came to me because he didn't have anywhere else to go. You guys, I was just doing what I thought was right. Just because you did what you thought was right doesn't make it right, Crank pointed out. Exactly. Piper slammed her hands on the table and glared at Ratchet, Ratchet on the opposite side of the table. Who's to say that he won't try to do something to us in the middle of the night, huh? I... Rodney mumbled. See? Even he doesn't think so, Crank said. It's not that. It's just that I don't see why none of you are giving Ratchet a chance to prove himself. If you want him to prove anything, then you won't let him out of your sight. That includes tonight. Bender widened his eyes. Crank! No, if he really thinks that man is trustworthy, then he should stay in the same room with them. <gasps> That's the only way that I'll even consider thinking any good of him. The Rusties waited for what Rad Rodney had to say. Ratchet was as well, genuinely interested in what he had to say. Rodney thought to himself for a moment and glanced at Ratchet beside him. As much as he didn't trust him that much himself, he figured that he might as well do it. If Ratchet so much as lay a finger on him, then he would know for sure that he wasn't trustworthy, and would inform Big World in the morning about Ratchet's returning. Well, either way, he would probably still let Big World know, just to be safe. Rodney took a quick breath before nodding his head. He made eye contact with the shocked crank on the other side of the table, as well as the other Rusties, who had the same expression of surprise. All right, then, he said, I'll do it. Yay! Uh, uh, yeah, I can... I can see where this is going. Yeah, see? Okay, probably the last chapter that we really reread. Clearing out the dirt. No more assumptions. Only 120 people made it this far? I am so disappointed. Okay. I gotta say, this is pretty, pretty good written, you know? I don't remember what half of these robots are, but like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. that was your favorite movie, and you don't remember half the robots. That's why only half the people are left. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'll, maybe I'll watch it later. I'll, I'll drag Cameron and be like, we're gonna go watch the robot movie, and you're gonna sit down, and you're gonna like it. <laughs> He's gonna be like, what the hell? I wanna play Maple Store. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> I don't know. I'm a prophet. Yeah. Uh, he's like, I gotta, I gotta do flag race. I, I gotta go do flag race. I'll be right back. I gotta run bosses at seven. <laughs> Is that what he says? <laughs> Basically, it's like I gotta run bosses at seven. That's when, the, that's when the, the the clock resets in the server. So I gotta redo all my stuff and I gotta do my dailies. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, that's I gotta, when the clock resets. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I gotta go do my dailies. Uh, I, I, they push back the date. Now we gotta do our run at eleven o'clock. That's what, that's basically what I. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Blush. <laughs> After dinner, everyone was getting ready for bed. 
As Aunt Fanny was cleaning up the dinner and the Rusties were thanking her and leaving the kitchen, Rodney grabbed Ratchet by the shoulder, stopping him from leaving. What do you think you're doing? Ratchet rumbled lowly at him. Why don't you help Aunt Fanny with the dishes? He asked Ratchet with a sort of fake sweetness in his voice. I'm sure she'll appreciate it. Ratchet looked insulted. Do you think... Do I look like some kind of dishwasher to you? <laughs> Being... <laughs> there actually is a... Per the, the, you know what's funny about that? Rodney's father is a straight up dishwasher. His stomach is a dishwasher. <laughs> what's his name? Wash Disher? Oh, I can't remember. It's probably like Frank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after all these mechanical names, his name is just Frank. Yeah. <laughs> Being coated in silver and shine brings that assumption. What, don't, what, don't you think? Before Ratchet could res respond to that, Ronnie shouted out to Aunt Fanny. Aunt Fanny! Ratchet would like to help you with cleaning up if that's okay. Aunt Fanny looked pleased. Oh, that would be great! Without another word, Rodney shoved Ratchet into the kitchen, closing the door, leaving him there with the, the snail-shaped robot. As he turned to go back into the living room, the Rusties were in his path, looking disappointed and confused at him. What the heck was that, Rodney? Cranky explained. I think that's the orange one with the wheel. <laughs> the, judging on his dialogue. Ah. <laughs> uh. Are you betraying us or something? No, no, Rodney said, shaking his head and hands. I would never. Then explain what happened back there, Piper demanded. Why is he here, and why are you suddenly so buddy-buddy with him now? Okay, okay, I'll tell you, Rodney fumbled his hands nervously. Look, I'm, I'm just pretending to be nice to him, all right? I don't, I don't want to be his friend. Oh, damn. <laughs> Oof. Oof. You, you're not lying, are you? Of course not. I would never lie to you guys. You are like family to me. He rubbed his arms. I just, it's just that he came to me earlier at my work with a broken arm. I feel like he was in some kind of intention to coming to me of all people. And I want to find that out. I'm planning on going to talk to Big Well tomorrow to see what else I can do. Speaking of that guy, Lug jumped in. I thought he was supposed to get rid of Ratchet, you know, for arts and stuff. I thought so too, and that's why I went to the underground today, because I thought no one would be there. But sure enough, he and his dad were still down there. Wonder why he didn't get rid of them? Luck pondered. Bender seemed to let out a big sigh of relief before going over to his friends. Gosh! I'm just glad this is all facade. For a second there, I thought you were going to the dark side. <laughs> Piper looked a little relieved too. Yeah. <laughs> I think they make a Star Wars reference in this movie. I forgot where, though. <laughs> Piper looked a little relieved, too. She took a step forward towards Ronnie. So, what should we do? For now, I think it'd be better if we don't let Ratchet know that we're suspecting him of something. So let's try to treat him like a normal robot. Okay, but what about tonight? Where is he supposed to sleep? Crank questioned. Not it, Diesel said. I already said I was going to do it, Ronnie assured. That means that... One of you is gonna share a room. Uh, <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> Fender wraps his, his arm around his sister. I'll sleep in Piper's room. You two can have mine for the night. He then frowned and furrowed his brows. But you and him better not mess up or break anything, he threatened. Don't worry, we won't. Lug, Lug looked a little concerned. But Rod, are you sure you want to do this? After all, out of all of us... Ratchet hates you the most. Who's to say he won't do anything to you? I th I think I'll be okay. And besides, if anything happens, I'll be sure to let you guys know. Piper punched Rodney at his elbow and put her hands on her hips. You better. I don't want to scream. <laughs> do it. Uh, <laughs> scream I was going to scream. Anyway, screaming along with the sound of glass breaking came from inside the kitchen. Worried, the Rusties opened the door and ran inside, going to see what happened. <gasps> Cliffhanger! Oh my. Hold on, I'm voting for this. What, should, what, should I leave a comment? 
What are you gonna leave? I'm I'm so glad that Wattpad recommended me this book. I need to watch <laughs> robots again. <laughs> Did you like watch it recently or something? I remember watching it when I when I was doing my accounting job. L M A O. <laughs> Perfect. I left a comment on there. Nice. All right. Well, did you enjoy it? It was. It was. I mean, I was trying to remember the plot half the time, but I. It was a decent read. Compare this to SpongeBob. Of the, the Spongebob X-Ray that we read. It's... it's <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I'm trying to remember the Spongebob one, actually. Uh, we were visiting, and then we had a crush on Spongebob, and then some... some it was weird. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that one's better. Yep, yep, yeah, okay, right, okay. Yeah. Classic, classic. So on the tier list, this would definitely be a C tier. <laughs> yeah, Spongebob is SS+. Plus. What?! <laughs> We're gonna put the for sure, third for sure. SpongeBob one up there, yes. along with the uh, Harrowbrine reader. No, where's Harvey fitting all this? Harvey, what? What's Harvey? <gasps> You're gonna do a poor Harvey like that? Oh, anyway. <laughs> I, I guess now we should spin the wheel, huh? Go see if it lands on uh, anything important like Harvey. That'd be pretty cool. Okay. Also, I changed the color since we're technically in spring now. I noticed. Yeah. It's in pink and yellow. Yeah, alright, how do I shuffle? Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Alright, let's see. I think it's gonna land on Tangled. Never God mind. fucking damn it! <laughs> Man, I don't know what to choose. Alright, well, I have a week. Yeah, you have a week to, to pick our poison. Uh, let's see. I mean, it's yeah. real easy. You can pick something that we are currently reading, or something brand new, or this I'll, book I'm again. I'm gonna pick something brand new, of course. Alright, yeah, yeah. Or you, you can pick this book. <laughs> Which one? The one that we were reading, we just finished reading. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, let me put that on here. The Rodney... <laughs> yeah, Rodney X Ratchet. Perfect. Nice. Gotta make sure that's on there for next time. <laughs> Alright, so I guess if you guys would like to read the rest of this book, uh, I'll have a link down below in the description. I definitely want to read this again. <laughs> it seems like like a fun little time. Mm -hmm. And whatnot. And uh, thank you for joining me, Minho, on this. Thank you for reading a weird-ass fanfiction that didn't even get to like any romance before we ended the chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Could almost label it like a slow, slow, slow burner, burn, slow burner or something. Yeah, you're, you're learning the lingo. I'm so proud. <laughs> yeah. Soon you're gonna be fluent in like how to how to talk about fan fiction. Please no. <laughs> you're like God no. This is a nightmare. Help me. <laughs> you now know what a crack ship is. How does it feel? I'm gonna. Forget it. Okay. <laughs> but uh, check out the playlist for other uh, Wattpad readings and whatnot. Some of them include Minho. It's, uh, I'm, I'm probably like 3% include Minho and whatnot. But anyway. <laughs> uh, my name is Phoenix. That was Minho. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye!